Hey guys, good to see you. So I'm in um, Altador in Calgary here. Oh, the bell just went off. And I'm just going to give you a tour of the Rundlewood Gardens. And Rodney, you might hear him in the background just giving answers to some questions or talking about his garden. He doesn't want to be seen on camera. But uh, I'll give you a tour of this lovely gardens and they sell uh, perennials that are hardy here too as well. So it's a lovely garden. I thought you'd really like it. Okay, Rodney, tell me about your rock garden here. Well, this is our third rock garden that we built in the garden. Um, and by this time we had kind of learned technique and style for building um, nice thick stone for the walls and layering properly to make it look more like a geological feature that you see in the mountains here. It's also the sunniest spot in the garden, so we have lots of succulents, um, anything from hen and chicks to cacti, uh, opuntias types, which are the uh, prickly pear, and they come in colors that are yellow, pink, red, and kind of an apricot color. And what is this? Um, okay, That's I'll see if I can get my finger. alpine valerian. Okay. So like uh, the regular garden valerian, which gets about three feet tall, it has nice fragrant flowers, but it's uh, is more of a rock garden type plant. Okay. And rock gardens kind of, they're a little bit like an early blooming, so we're missing um, some of the some, blooming. Some of the stuff is behind it. Unfortunately, just finishing is the little cactus called claret cup, um, which is an earlier blooming. Too, but well. there's many things like the valerian. This is now early summer. We're into early summer now. So right. The valerian is early summer. This is Monardella odoratissima, which is a native to the hot uh, areas of uh, the Dakotas. And it has a flower that looks like a monarda. Mm. And behind it is a allium with a swirling foliage. And that'll bloom in this so guy this, here. This one here. And it'll bloom in uh, July with pink flowers on it. Lovely. And what have we what have we got this purple one right here? This little guy? Yeah. It's a little annual that kind of seeds itself around in the garden. Oh lovely. Or just in the rock garden, I should say. Right. And what stone are you using? This is all rundle stone. Rundle stone. And yes. how do you get it so it's like um so it's kind of angled yep. and you, you just stack it and Well we had a mound of poor subsoil behind okay. that we built onto. Okay. And then the um the uh, then there's a layer of really gravelly poor subsoil. Okay. Which provides a good drainage near the top of the the bed okay um, and the stones we've placed in put soil in between where we can so we can grow things in amongst the stones right that's a little Veronica Veronica Ortensis and are all these um, considered Alberta native or no, no. most of them what we grow are not Alberta okay natives. Um, they're from all over the world but they're often climates similar to Okay, and and how do you get your seeds for things like? Oh, there's, uh, well, you can um, order seed from anywhere in the world. Uh, there's no regulations in Canada for seed. Um, so yeah, there's all sorts of specialty places, and also, you know, one time, and you can sort of import stuff to plants from Europe, but it costs a lot of money for shipping as well right. as the phytosanitary certificates. Right. So you have to be certified. Uh, the plants have to be certified. Okay, <laughs> not you. <laughs> and you have a type of weeping large here, hey? Yep. Yeah, it's lovely. Decidua pendula, um, fairly and quite commonly available now. Uh, so because we have big elms above us, um, the large is reaching out towards the sun. So it's all very one-sided now, but that's uh, kind of a quirky charm of it. Lovely. Okay, so we're just going to move forward and you have some... Wow, I love this pathway. 
Is there a story behind this um, fountain? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we just... Uh, just like them. Just like that it was in the house for quite a while and then we realized that it fit on top of the uh, bird bath perfectly so we thought we'd put it out here. Perfect. You have a lot of peonies just coming. Well, most of our peonies are finished actually. Yeah, just, just kind they're of, just kind after of... After three days of uh, 30 degree weather. Yeah. So we're seeing the tail end of the peonies. Most of the flowers on these peonies, each flower would only last about three days. And right. with the heat, boom, it just quickly went. Yes. So this one is called, this one is one of the later ones for us, and it's called Athena. Mm, it's lovely. So kind of an apricot color with a dark base. Yeah. And these are, none of these are lactiflorus. Um, mm -hmm. These are all species from woodland areas um, of Europe and Asia mostly. Okay. And they need to bloom early before it gets too heavily shaded. Would you say this is a woodland type garden? Definitely. And you've got some hardy geraniums. There we go. Well, that's uh, geranium macrorhizum. It's a good ground cover geranium mm -hmm. for shady, drier areas. Lovely. The form of lily of the valley with yeah. the striped foliage. What would you say, what, what form is that? Um, it's albo striata. So, Convalaria majalis, uh, mm -hmm. albo striata. It's a little bit of flowering. Well, the flowers are pretty well done, but the uh, trillium mm -hmm. back here, they just they start off pure white, and then once they're fertilized, uh, they turn to a pinkish color. The last little bit of flowering on peony um, vetchii. Oh, that's lovely. And nice fine foliage on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost it's got a, a palm-like. Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. And what we love about the peonies is the all these species have such different foliage. Right, exactly. It creates a unique texture. Uh, Pukadima. Pukadima. That's lovely with the edges. Okay, let me just get your... There we go. It's not invasive or aggressive or anything. It's That's been in there for um, five years. Oh, wow. And that's all it's done, so... That, Dark flower is the uh, geranium phium. The leaf is really nice. Yeah, and there's uh, it varies. Um, these are seedlings, so you get a lot of variation. But like right here, when you okay. a little plant, with, uh, you can see really dark Oops. foliage on it. Oh yeah, it's quite striking. And it's good for shade. This geranium. So. Oh, so nice. Well, geraniums usually can handle dry shade, so. Yeah. Oh wow, so it's a little bit sunnier in here. So this has a combination of sun and shade type plants. Mm -hmm. um, pagoda dogwood, cornus mm -hmm. alternifolius here, mm -hmm. uh, native to southern Manitoba and uh, southeast. So it prefers moisture conditions than what we have here, but where we are right now, it's the lowest part of the garden and it does have a tendency to be a little bit moister. Flocks to Veracata. Beautiful. Up a medium. Lunaria redivita, or perennial form of honesty, or perennial form of money. So, um, when can people come and visit your garden and shop at the, at the um, store? Basically Thursdays through Saturdays, 10 to 4, but they need to book an appointment. Right. And they can do that through our website. Walk through a little bit. Lungwort. Yep. Um, that's a selection called Trevi Fountain. So much more upright in its flowers. Some beautiful columbine down here. 
tiny. That's a species of uh, columbine, um, Aquilegia shocklii, which is native to, I believe, the mountains of Colorado. Mm -hmm. It's a Western North American species. Wow, how old is the garden, Rodney? Uh, the garden we started about 20 years ago. Wow. So it was all lawn, except we had two big elm trees, um, a higher 12 apple, and that was it. Gardens take time to develop. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you've got to get the plants in and let them mature, which takes quite a long time in our climate. And patience. These are some of the seedlings you started. So we're just, the figs are we're just bringing them out and starting to harden them off. And then we're starting to put them in here. So we didn't like this heat. <laughs> yes. It's a climbing asparagus. It, it's only been in the ground for about three years. I started it from seed and then planted it out about three years ago. So the texture is amazing. About 15 feet tall once it really is mature. So we're, we're at 10 up feet? About 10, 12, yeah. Now. Wow. So, so this bed that we're looking at right now is our so called wet bed. It was designed to hold extra moisture. Uh, so we've dug down about three feet, lined it with a pool liner, with some holes in the pool liner, and then peat, sand, and compost. And we also have a pipe coming off of our eave trough, which comes into weeping tile in, in the bed. Oh, so wow. So that when it does rain, it gets a little extra moisture than just surface. And so we're able to grow ligularias in full sun. Uh, the Dodecathians love it here because it's, uh, the shooting stars, Dodecathians, um, love it here because they get that spring moisture that they get in the wild. Unguisorbas or burnets, uh, the one leaf you're looking at right now, it will produce a, a spike that comes up to about six feet and oh. has a pink flower on it. Wonderful. The selection is called uh, Pink Elephant. <laughs> and when does that, that bloom? They're blooming uh, usually later July. So we have uh, Brett Marie Crawford, the Ligularia, here with the beautiful foliage. And next to it is another Sanguisorba. And this one is native to northern Japan. And it produces a, a big bottle brush flower um, that's lilac in color. And they called it uh, Lilac Squirrel. <laughs> Great and name. And you get the wonderful foliage contrast between the blue-green mm -hmm. foliage of the Sanguisorba. Mm -hmm. Which makes it stand green. out complement each other. Mm -hmm. Well, the irises look lovely. Oh yeah, let's get this peony here. That's okay, this can't be everywhere. We've got the goat spear, Aruncus, here, which mm -hmm. is in spike now, so by mid-June or late June, it's usually in full flower. Mm -hmm. And then we have Veronicastrums, or Culver's root, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't bloom until July and lasts for quite a while. And it's a wonderful, wonderful plant for bees and butterflies. <laughs> and look at you got and, here. Uh, Rogersia is here, and then a another Ligularia right next to it and again you get that wonderful contrast of textures. Yes, it's lovely. And they both flower. They both have flower. What is this fern here? That's Osmunda, no, Onoclea sensibilis. Um, it's native to almost all around the world but it loves sun and moisture. So in southern Ontario you'd see it growing in the ditches in full sun but there's lots of moisture in the ditches. But then coming up through of it is, this is a variety called Vetberg, which in the spring, the foliage is a chocolate color. 
and it, uh, when it comes into flower, it uh, turns green, but there's still little hints of chocolate in the foliage even right now. Yeah, you can see it on top. And, that comes uh, and then we've got the variegated. The variegated one, that's Grace Barker, which really clumps up nicely. There's a nice clump over on this yeah, side. Let's take it. Wow, it's lovely. And then behind it is another variety called Dragon Scale. And it has a ridge down the center of each leaf. Thanks. And just a little bit different, a little bit different texture. Wow, I've walked right by this. So this is our first rock garden that we built. <laughs> and it was thanks to a dear friend of ours who was moving to the Victoria to retire. And she knew that some of the, her plants from her rock garden would not survive out in the rainy uh, Mediterranean climate out right. there and she encouraged us to build this rock garden and uh, do you think rock gardens have gotten more popular or oh I think so definitely mm -hmm. uh, one nice thing about rock gardens is that um, they require far less water uh, that is a primula primula marginata oh it's of the same family um, wow. so it's it'll have little mold flowers in the spring and but it's got the wonderful toothed foliage and the underside has what they call farina so it's kind of a powder and you can see that just showing through yeah this is it's now going to seed but this is a clematis called hirsutissima native to the high mountains of colorado um, and you can see the seed heads are st the last little bit of color in the flowers petals but the seed heads are forming now so it comes up in flowers early because it's native to very high elevations mm -hmm. and very cool elevations, so it needs to get everything done quickly. We have some anemones, which a lot of people are terrified of, <laughs> but this is anemone trifoliata. And this patch has been here for about 10 years now, and this is as big as it's gotten. So it's a very slow growing, um, spreading it spreads by rhizome mm -hmm. um, it all, doesn't see itself and it's also what they call a spring ephemeral which means that it flowers in the spring and then it'll die down and disappear for the summer like the whole plant disappears okay and on this side there's the last little bit of a soft yellow one uh, anemone lipsiensis which is a hybrid uh, so again it doesn't produce seed and Thriscus. And Thriscus sylvestris raven's wing. It's some um, seedlings. There's the plants are over here. Oh wow. And that's what they do. Okay. So they have the purple foliage and white flowers on them. They're a member of the carrot family. Okay. I love their and seed head. Yeah, yeah, they're just nice and airy. What have we got here? <laughs> Uh, that's an allium I started from seed uh, from the Devon Botanical Gardens up near Edmonton. Um, they collect seed off their plants. Um, they are all open pollinated, so it could, you know, it could be crossed with anything. So it's an allium, it's an onion um, that uh, is doing, it's much bigger than it should be. <laughs> and it'll have a um, soft yellow flower on it. The, the heads will straighten right up. Okay. And um, so it'll be, you know, this tall once it comes into bloom. And just a fun, beautiful foliage. Uh, mainly I grew up for the foliage. It looks you know, like corn stalks or bamboo. Just yes. that wonderful twisted. Exactly. Well, and the droopy heads are like yeah, lovely. Yeah, they neat right now, yeah. Um, it's called Malopospermum is the uh, genus. Um, and this is Peloponnesus or something um, for the species. It is native to Europe in the mountains. Uh, it goes all the way from Greece over to France. It's very much like our uh, cow parsnip. It's in the same family. It's an umbellifera or Apiaceae, and um, so the flowers are just getting ready to open. Once it, it it'll continue extending in height. And it'll get about uh, six feet, seven feet tall. 
The foliage is very soft and feathery. It's just gorgeous. There's no problems with contact dermatitis or any of that thing that you can get with some mm -hmm. of that, this family. Um, but just spectacular foliage plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me show you the area where you can buy plants. Then if you go across here. Apparently he keeps these in the ground all winter. Like doesn't take them inside and he plants them in sand so you can see the the little holes where the pots were the pots where he sold plants yeah lovely just saying a little goodbye from the gardens and a goodbye from Rodney on the side okay, thank you for uh, visiting the garden and uh, hopefully you uh, got a few interesting tidbits out of it of information absolutely thanks rodney you're welcome thank you till the next time bye